Mr. President, um, it's week 41. No, excuse me, it's week 45 of Waste of the Week uh, when I've been down here talking about waste, fraud, and abuse and trying to find a way to save the taxpayers' dollars. Um, as I have said uh, a number of times, uh, our efforts um, ever since starting in 2010 uh, and up to this point uh, to go big, uh, to address the real fiscal situation that this country is, is dealing with, the runaway entitlements, the ever-shrinking uh, discretionary pot, uh, the deficit spending leading to borrowing that has taken us from $10.7 trillion um, just in my term here, uh, now in its sixth year, from 10.7 to 19.2 trillion dollars. I don't think any of us can contemplate what 19.2 trillion dollars really means. But what it means in terms of its impact and effect is that we are passing on to future generations a debt which they will not be able to repay without serious consequences to our economy and serious consequences to their pocketbook. Uh, that's a, a speech for another time. Waste for the Week is simply an attempt to, uh, since we have not been able to uh, address the, the larger issue, an attempt to look at documented, uh, exposed uh, by inspector generals in the Government Accountability Office and other agencies, uh, clear waste, fraud, and abuse that has used taxpayers' dollars in an improper way. And so uh, this, the 45th edition, uh, now has, we've highlighted uh, close to $170 billion, uh, exceeding our goal of $100 billion considerably, uh, and with no end in sight. Uh, now, we're debating uh, this week, uh, last week and this week, the National Defense Authorization uh, a Bill, um, and critically important for our national security and to provide for uh, the kind of things our military needs to be an effective military. So I think it's appropriate to um, raise the issue that uh, no, one is, no agency is sacrosanct. And while I am a committed supporter of national defense, while I served on the uh, Senate Armed Services Committee for a 10-year period of time in my former time in the Senate uh, uh, and, and support much of what the military does. It is important that we point out that, that, that they are not sacrosanct uh, from falling into the category of abuse or waste or money that should have been better accounted for and spent. And so I'm taking this opportunity during this debate to point out the fact that uh, um, each agency of the federal government needs to be looked at, even those that we favor and want to support, uh, obviously, any penny, dime, nickel, or dollar, or more saved from something that needn't be spent is something that can go to help our soldiers be better trained, help us have a stronger military, or if not needed there, used to offset other programs within the federal government, or most importantly, hopefully, sent back to the taxpayer or reduced from the, ta the taxes that we take from the taxpayer. Uh, today, um, I want to talk about the acquisition process. Um, the Department of Defense Weapons Ac Ac Acquisitions System is the process by which DOD, Department of Defense, procures weapon systems or related, I related items from various defense contractors. They include the design, development, deployment, and disposal of weapons used by our military. Since 1990, the Government Accountability Office has included the Department of Defense's Weapons Acquisition System on its annual high-risk list. Let me explain that. The high-risk list, list uh, which is uh, put out each year by the Government Accountability Office, GAO, lists those risks of spending that fall under the category of Frankly, why are we spending this money in the first place? Or let's look at how we're spending this money and see if it could be spent in a better and more efficient ways. And due to the programs, and looking at programs vulnerabilities to waste, fraud, and abuse. Now, one of the biggest problems with the system is that frequently significant dollars are spent on weapons programs that end up 
never being completed. Between 2001 and 2011, the Department of Defense spent $46 billion on a dozen different weapons systems, programs, that were never completed. Let me repeat that. $46 billion of money spent on programs, well-intended, but never completed for, a vari for various reasons. I want to use just one example of that $46 billion category. And that's a program that was initiated but never finished. But it's an example of how taxpayers' money can be spent in significant amounts uh, and with no results. Uh, it was clear that after 911, uh, we ought to be looking at the president's transportation. And in this case, uh, Marine One, the helicopter that the president uses when transferring to Andrews Air Force Base to climb aboard Air Force One, or is used overseas for special uh, short trips. Uh, Air Force One, uh, Marine One, excuse me, um, uh, was deemed to be somewhat behind on its technological capabilities, especially its communications and security capabilities and the Department of Defense initiated an effort to build a new helicopter. Yet the requirements and the engineering that was needed for this new helicopter design were never finally fixed. And as the process went forward and the money was being spent, um, new ideas, new technologies came into play and the thought was, well, let's add this here and change that there and incorporate this into it and in the, as a result, uh, uh, the engineering that had originally been mapped out, the requirements, the design, um, was not followed. Uh, there were constant changes, constant pleas for, let's, we need to spend more money, we need to do more and more, and on and on it went. And without those fixed and agreed on guidelines, the Department of Defense continued adding more, putting more add-ons over the years, and ultimately, the helicopter became so weighted with so much new technology and, and security position uh, uh, adjustments and so forth that the mission, uh, capa that its capability was compromised. And as such, as such, the program finally had to be scrapped in 2009, and the cost to the taxpayers, $3.7 billion of money spent and for no purpose whatsoever. Good idea, good intent, probably the right thing to do, but without a sufficient acquisition system and development system, without an ability to say, look, let's get this thing fixed in terms of what we want it to look like, what we want it to be, and let's go forward with it. And if perhaps there's a few adjustments that we can make, but certainly it would be better to incorporate the new technologies uh, at a rate that we thought we could accomplish within a limited amount of time, rather than simply ongoing 2001, 2002, 2003, all the way to 2009, and finally say, we're never going to get there. Ending up, as I have said, with $3.7 billion of waste. Now, that's just one example. In the 2000 report, a 14 report, the General Accountability Office found that problems like this have persisted within weapons acquisitions for decades. GAO found that many defense programs are launched before officials have enough information needed to determine whether the proposed program is even viable. Meaning, there's a mismatch between the new defense system's wish list of all the things that DOD would like to have versus the current technology that, we, uh, that would be able to provide within the current financial and time constraints for developing the program. In terms, uh, the program sometimes gets the green light to move forward with unrealistic costs and timetables leading to increased costs and development delays. General Accountability Office and military experts have emphasized the need to increase DOD staff training on how to properly estimate project needs and technology capabilities before launching 
a project. Now you think this would have been simple. You would think this would have been the guidelines from the very beginning. You don't start a project until you estimate the project, what the project needs and the technological capabilities that are capable of providing those needs before you start. But there is a history within the Department of Defense and frankly within the policies of defense contractors. Get it started. Once it's started, uh, they're not going to turn it back down. And whether we're looking at the building of planes, I mean, the, the history is replete with Department of Defense ac acquisitions uh, that have incorporated changes that once started, you can't stop the thing. And then the narrative turns from why are we doing this in the, in the first place because we never fixed the requirements and fixed the cost and, and agreed not to go beyond that cost. It turns into, oh, well, we need to spend more. We can't turn it back now because otherwise uh, it, it, we've wasted that money. And the helicopter, presidential helicopter is a perfect example. And we're talking about $3.7 billion on that one. And on and on and on it goes. So I've just given you one example. Now, uh, Mr. President, I'm pleased that uh, Senator McCain and Senator Reid, uh, the ranking, uh, uh, the chairman and ranking member, of the Senate Armed Services Committee have acknowledged this. And this National Defense Authorization Act for 2017 fiscal year makes some very important reforms to the DOD acquisition process. They've taken note of this, and the committee's taken note of this. And out before us now, within this bill, this bill that sits on my desk and on every desk here, that we are debating, adding amendments to, and hopefully we'll finish this week, in this legislation that we're debating and talking about and hope to pass uh, are a number of reform processes and reform legislation here to help us address this problem. This legislation would reform the current regulatory process and make it easier for companies to compete for DOD contracts in order to boost competition and lower costs. And additionally, the bill would increase training Maybe this is the most important of all, training for those at the Department of Defense who plan and oversee the acquisition projects and put greater emphasis on technological innovation, which could help save money while spearheading new cutting edge defense systems. That's the goal. That's the goal we have outlined in this legislation and why we need to support this legislation. It's an example of how the Senate can tackle waste, fraud and abuse right now and I encourage my colleagues to support these proposals. Having said that, let me add, as we do each week, a $3.7 billion for a failed effort to develop a new helicopter for the president, which brings our total taxpayer price tag to nearly $176 billion. Not small change. Think what we could do with that if it was spent wisely or more importantly, if we didn't have to take it from the taxpayer in the first place. Mr.